Hi class, let's talk about how you're going to work on your prototype this week for your portfolio website. So you already have a site map that is your brainstorm of what is going to go on your site. So I want you to revisit that this week and look at what you put on it. And that's going to drive kind of the prototype that you make this week. So this is sort of your map of what needs to go on your site. And now you have to figure out what it's going to look like on your site. Where do all of these pieces go on the page? Um, what goes with them? Does this about section have art? Do events have dates? You know, you're going to get a little bit more specific about these pieces. So the first thing I want you to do is to determine the conversions. This is something we haven't talked about yet. So let's take a minute to have a little sidebar on them. If you're a marketing student, you probably know this term really well. If you're not, this might be the first time you're using it. But when we're creating something that's digital, that people are going to use by pressing buttons, Buttons, um, you know, interacting with, then we can count the behaviors that they take. We can, can we can count how many people pressed a button, or how many people saw a page, or how many people signed up for an email newsletter. And we call these in the digital website, you know, world conversions. So these are the countable actions that you want people to take. And what I want you to do is think about what are the most important ones on your website, right? You're going to have a bunch of buttons. You're going to have a bunch of pages to look at, but which ones really, really matter? Which ones do you feel like, wow, if someone did this on my website, that would really help them and help me achieve our goals. And so I want you to think about what the conversions are. And I put flows and funnels on here, but we're not going to work with flows and funnels. But if you are a marketing student, then you're probably aware that a conversion usually has multiple steps. People don't go to your website and immediately press the email newsletter sign up button, right? They're going to read a little bit. They're maybe going to go from page one to page two. That's going to convince them to sign up for your newsletter. So the flow or the funnel, whatever word you want to use there, is the steps that people take to go from landing on your page, your website, to actually taking the action. I don't need you to do anything with those this week. I just wanted to bring it up in case it's something that you are familiar with so that you can kind of draw the connection between that and conversions, or if it's new to you so that it's a new terminology that you can um, add to your knowledge base. So I want you to figure out what the countable actions are. These could be like download resume, send contact form. It could be just look at a certain page. Maybe there's a piece of work in your portfolio that you just feel like is your absolute best work. And if somebody saw it, they would totally want to hire you. So you can put, you know, view this piece of work, you know, give it a name as your conversion. This is totally up to you what you think it's most important for people to do that you want to count and keep an eye on and see if people are actually doing it. And then I want you to prototype your site with Google Slides. I'll show an example in a bit. I want you to use real content as much as possible. All of your written content should be real. Um, any of your, you know, visuals, if you want to like show pictures, they should be real pictures or they should be like steal them from other people, like take screenshots of other people's art or other people's work and throw it in um, because you want to demonstrate the kind of thing you want to show. Basically, the images, art, you know, I don't really care what you do for those other than don't put a blank box, right? Don't just put a gray box that says art, you know make a doodle, get a screenshot, placeholder, steal someone else's work, something that shows what that piece of art is actually supposed to be. And then you can make a real version of that later, but just something that shows the idea. But the written content should all be real. So my advice for part one with the conversions is to really think about the perspective of your user. And I'm going to show you examples from my portfolio. My portfolio is going to be way different than yours. I will tell you that right now. If you just copy mine, I don't think that portfolio is going to work for you. Um, I have been working in Indianapolis for like 10 years now. Um, I don't apply for jobs really. Like I don't go online to LinkedIn and find jobs and like send applications. Um, for the last few years, every job that I've had, they've reached out to me and I've just been asked to come in and interview for it. So, um, or it's been a contract job where I get emails, you know, asking, hey, can you work on this one project for a couple weeks or a couple months? So that's probably a lot different from what you're trying to do. You're probably trying, and it's okay if you are going to be like that, like, if that's your situation, then use that situation. But I would imagine for most of you, it's going to be more like you're kind of applying to jobs. You're sending a resume and the resume has your website address on it. And then people are reading your resume and then going to your website. So that's a lot different from my 
what my portfolio needs to do. So really think about what that person is after. Um, I don't wanna see goals that are like, look at your work or learn about you, right? The situation that's probably happening with your website is you already sent a cover letter and a resume to a person, and then that person is going to your site. So what are they doing? It's actually quite specific, right? They are evaluating your fit against a list of criteria for a specific job. Um, they are determining if you could do a certain type of work. Um, so be really specific. You know, is that person trying to determine whether you are a good SEO marketer? Uh, you know, just be specific as you think about this. And uh, I just challenge you all to really think about what that person who's going to your website really needs to know about you and then, you know, make your conversions related to that. And that's going to be based on your own personal experience, you know, what it is you want out of your portfolio, what kind of jobs you're applying for. So my advice for part two is, again, use real content and think about each slide as a section of your site. We'll get into that in the next video. Um, make sure that you use real content. And again, it's important to use real content because you really need to think through what goes on your site. What we're prototyping and thinking through and testing this week is the messaging and the content. Is this the right content to get a hiring manager to understand you and make sure you're a good fit? Um, is this the right message? So we want to focus on messaging and content. So we're going to make a prototype that's all about message and content. We're not really going to worry about making it look like a website at this point. And example for me, key conversions, again, since I'm not sending out resumes, what's happening in my case is recruiters and HR people and like design leaders at companies are hearing about me or they know about me or they've seen a talk from me locally. They're going to my website and what I want them to do is download my resume because that's kind of the thing that they're going to use at their company. They're going to need some kind of document that describes me to share with the other people on their team and say, hey, I found this great candidate. Let me show you who she is. And they're going to want that resume to pass around and show other people. So if people download my resume, that's a good conversion for me. And then I also want them to email me. So obviously I want them to come to my website and go, oh yeah, we've heard about Megan. Oh, I like, I like what I see here. I really want to consider her. So I want them to email me and say, hey, we're considering you. So those are my two key conversions. Let's take a look at my portfolio prototype. I won't go through the whole thing. I'll just make this available to everybody. But here's how I've structured it. I just have a gray slide that's showing where each page starts. So I have a home page, And then this is the top of the home page. So here's my messaging. And I'm just showing that I want a big title and then kind of a small title. And then I want some kind of art at the top that looks like, you know, a journey of some kind. So I just made this crappy emoji. I just drew it in slides. You don't have to get complicated this week. Just show the idea. Looks like garbage, but yeah, get the idea. And then if you scroll down, then you would see this. And so I'm just kind of thinking through like, oh, what is each section like? Oh, I want to talk about where I work and I want to show the logo of that. And then I want to have like links to projects. And then maybe I want to, as you scroll down, like talk a little bit about myself. And then I want to get back to the projects. So I'm just showing uh, the different experience of the homepage. And you can kind of imagine if you look over here that this is like the whole homepage and it's really long and you're just scrolling. So you start here, scroll, 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 scroll. So I'm just showing what it's like to scroll through. And then I get to the work page and I'm just going to show one example of the work page. So I want all of my pages that show my work to have a big picture of my work at the top. And then I want it to have like a name for the project. So this project is called onboarding new customers. And then I want to have like kind of big, a section that says the problem and a section that says the solution. And then I want to get into like smaller, like smaller text. You can see my text gets a little bit smaller and I want it to be like step one, step two, step three, and I want each step to have a piece of artwork. So you can kind of, again, imagine that this work page is all this here from 19 to 25, but I'm just breaking it up. So it's like, okay, start here, scroll, 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 scroll. And this prototype is helping me think through how I want to present it. You know, you don't need to present your work as steps. You could just present your work as 
you know, mostly pictures, but whatever you want to do, show it in the slides. Mine has a lot of text because that's what I want to show. That's what I've decided to put in my prototype and making this prototype forced me to think if that's what I want or not. And then to show an example of what it would look like. And then I just have down here all the junk that I tried that I thought was garbage and then got rid of. <laughs> so I highly suggest that you don't delete anything when you prototype. If you have pieces that you don't want to use, you know, just throw them at the bottom. I almost always put like a little section that's just like um, scratch, I call it scratch pad <laughs> personally, that just shows like here's the junk I decided not to use because if I want to use it later, I don't want to have to redo it. So I would highly suggest that you do the same so that if you are thinking through all this and at the very last minute you decide, oh no, this isn't the prototype that I want, you know, you maybe have some things that you had tried before that you can bring back rather than starting over. So that is how you're going to create your portfolio prototype for this week is using Google Slides. So write out a couple conversions that you wanna focus on and then use slides to just show the different sections.